How many of you have health insurance? Raise hands. <laughs> a lot. How many of you have seen a medical bill that is too high? Oh, yeah, a lot. And you're not alone. Every day, a thousand American families declare bankruptcy, not because of luxury spending, not because of gambling, the Lamborghini, but because of medical bills. So it's not a surprise many of us feel anxiety about health care, and if we're going to be covered if that day comes when we get seriously ill and need high-end care. And turns out this is not just a feeling, this is backed up by the data. As a whole in the United States, we pay the most for health care, more than double of other wealthy nations, while we receive on average the least. It's not being said we don't have pockets of real excellence, but it isn't spread evenly across the population. So why can't this be fixed by supply and demand the way we learn about the free market economy? It's because healthcare is not a free market. If you shop for food at the store, you have a lot of options. You can look at things, you can put back what you don't like, you can shop around. If it's too expensive, you go elsewhere. You might not shop at all today, grow your own. Healthcare is a very different situation. Think about one, having only one fruit stand with only apples. Each apple is 500 bucks, and suddenly your, your life depends on buying one of these apples. That's not a free choice, but that's healthcare. At the same time, during open enrollment, when you pay a health, if you pay health insurance, you, you choose a plan, it's like grabbing a mystery bag. You can't really tell what's in it. You will only know when you're sick and you discover what is being covered. And even medical professions, professionals, not even a doctor, can really understand what's being covered. So that makes it really difficult to apply the laws of supply and demand. And the other thing that's happening is, is in healthcare, we all split into groups. We have HMO, PPO, Medicare, uninsured. Everybody is different, and nobody really knows what's going on for the others and what hardships they face. That makes it very, very difficult to advocate as a group for positive change. Today, I want to talk to you about a person who has no insurance. This is a patient I had direct interaction with, and the uninsured are often forgotten because, you know, sometimes you, you're not in, in their shoes. So what's her life like? She's a low-wage worker. She makes about $20,000 after taxes, which is too much to qualify for the state-run Medicaid plan, but it's too little to really afford health insurance in the Bay Area. So she goes without, she's young, she hopes for the best, and of course she gets sick. She gets a skin infection, a staph infection on her leg that rapidly spreads and needs to be treated ur urgently. She goes eventually to the emergency room. What happens there? The good news is she gets treated. She gets the oral antibiotics she needs, and she makes a full recovery. The bad news is that she also gets a whole lot of unnecessary procedures. She gets an x-ray, a long list of diagnostics. And this, by the way, is happening to all of you when you go see the doctor, too. And the worst news comes in the mail. What do you think that is? The bill, yes, the bill. And the bill is humongous. It's more than $8,000, it's huge is half of her annual income for a very simple, run-of-the-mill procedure, oral antibiotic, monitoring of the patients. Any resident could do this in, in his or her sleep. Very simple, basic care, $8,000, half her annual salary. So I saw this bill and I'm like, this is insane, how is this possible? And I talked to a friend of mine who specializes in this area, he's a healthcare lawyer, and I asked him, why is this so expensive? And this is what he said. He laughed and he said, you know, Julia, everyone knows these are fantasy prices. Fantasy prices. They will never get this. No one pays these prices. Well, except the uninsured. So let that sit for a minute. That means the people who can afford it the least actually get charged the highest prices 
in this system. And how do they do this with the bill? Let's take a look. One way how they inflate the bill is through predatory billing practices. When I took a closer look at this bill, I discovered that our patient, who was an outpatient in the ER, consistently got charged the much higher inpatient rates, leading to about $3,000 overcharge. So now you can contest this and get the bill reduced, but, but you first need to figure out that this is what's happening. It's not really obvious looking at this. This is hidden in the bill, and you need to be an expert to uncover it. So that's one way, 3K added, through predatory billing practices, preying on the most vulnerable people in society. The other thing that's happening is huge markups on drugs and supplies. I'm looking here at the IV bag, which is saline, just water and a pinch of salt, $325. So I buy this for my lab, and I know this is not $325. I look it up. And indeed, the IV bag is $4 for me, a lot less for the hospital when they buy wholesale. And also the antibiotic, the, the tool that really cures the patient here, is $8, not $355. So you're looking at markups here between 100 and 1,000 fold on reagents and supplies. Just to compare when you normally shop, the, the biggest markup you will ever encounter is around five-fold and is considered insanely excessive. So this is between 100 and 1,000-fold. This is stratospherical. It's completely off the scale. So what would Medicare pay for this? When I get the numbers, pull all the numbers for these procedures, a Medicare would would reimburse $274 for this treatment in the emergency room. That's 3% of the bill. Private insurance would pay about $500, and then they would strategically leave some items uncovered for you to pick up. But at the end of the day, Medicare is designed to reflect the average cost of the actual provision of care in the United States. So 274 is close to what it costs to treat the patient. That's 3%. What's up with the other 97% of this bill that's just been added on? So this is really outrageous. This exploitation of the most vulnerable members of our society. Why is this allowed? Why is nobody putting a stop to this? And for this, it helps to look at the broken social contract that underlies this problem. We, the people, delegate authority to the government, and in exchange, they're supposed to protect us, not only from outside threats, but also from predatory pricing and exploitation. The government sets up the marketplace for healthcare and carves out a space for healthcare providers to do business. They make sure it's regulated. Only licensed providers can enter. Not everybody can just go and do healthcare. They give tax breaks, and they set this up. And they allow monopolies to form to treat the majority of Americans. This is really a sweet deal. It's like a license to print money for these providers. And indeed, a lot of profits are made in these so-called non-profits at the moment. But the other part of the social contract is in exchange for getting this sweet deal and ability to make money at will almost with a constant influx of consumers that have nowhere else to go. Um, the other part of this, of this bargain is the requirement for them to actually make the system work for all. So they have to provide reasonably priced, not free, but reasonably priced health care of high quality to all Americans. But also here, the social contract is broken because that's not happening. Instead, the focus is on having good relationships with the government, making campaign contributions, and also being at every table where decisions are made. And guess who's missing at the table? It's us, the patients. We're not there when decisions are made. And in the end, you know, we're left to hold the bag. So how do we make this better? I believe strongly that there are some simple things we can do to make already significant improvements. First of all, we need to redirect the money that's already sloshing around in the system in line with the mission. What's the mission? There's a lot of confusion around the mission. 
The mission is to provide reasonably priced, high-quality health care to all Americans. The mission is not to include, you know, make everyone rich who's working in this system. The mission is not to increase return on investment for Wall Street, who's now owning 25% of all hospitals and 60% of emergency rooms. That's not the mission. The mission is to provide high-quality health care for all Americans. So we need to take a look at everything we do, and what's not in line with the mission needs to be scrapped. We need to protect the uninsured, the poor seniors, the incapacitated a lot more, I mean, especially from predatory billing practices and upcharging, like you just witnessed. We need to stop fantasy pricing. And as a nation, we need to define what is medically necessary and then ensure that insurance companies will actually cover that. Right now, the insurance company gets to decide what is medically necessary and what they will cover, which is a classical case of the fox guarding the hen house. And most importantly, we need to preserve autonomy for patients and doctors. The decision-making, the medical need determination, that has to be up to the doctor and the patient together, um, not to an insurance company, not to a billing department or a hospital administrator. So positive change happened, though. And we got, during COVID, so much empowerment for patients, um, and some really positive change has happened. And I want to bring this on up to everyone so you know this is, this, these, these are changes that are there and tr currently people try to push those back. We need to make sure that doesn't succeed and they stay. For example, you can now get telehealth across state lines. If you can't find someone here, you can talk to a doctor in Nevada for half the price. You can go to the pharmacy and get a prescription for COVID drug. You don't need to first find an appointment with some doctor who will prescribe it. You can go directly to the pharmacy. You can get diagnostic testing ordered for yourself, and you have the right to get the results uh, transmitted to you directly. You don't need to first call your doctor so that the doctor explains the results to you. And also there's a discussion around drug price rebates that will eventually, hopefully, reach patients and not be skimmed off by middlemen, middlemen called pharmacy benefit managers. So if I can leave you with, with one thought today, is accountability is more important than adding more money to the system. This system is like a car engine with a fuel line that's leaking in five places. And, the, and both big parties right now, and always, just fight about how we put more gas in the tank and how we pay for more gas in the tank and who's going to put it in. And nobody is really looking at fixing the leaks. And that needs to change because that part is critical for us to get that engine up and running. And I'm looking at this en engine. This is a 60s Chevy Impala. And I'm thinking, you know, a nation who can build such a beautiful engine can fix a couple of leaks in the fuel line. Thank you.